Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are crystal gazing into the year 2024 when it comes to the deal street. So Akshay, uh, what is going to drive m and What are the themes picking up and the sectors which are active? Um, I think there's two themes that we see consistently from our clients and uh, Vivek and Rahul can also speak on those themes. The first is that clients want to do more and more control deals. Nobody wants minority positions. They like to be in the driving seat. Uh, they're no longer scared of being promoters of, of companies in India. Hmm. Uh, so that's one theme. Uh, the second is we see a lot of platform deals. So if you were to take, for example, in the infrastructure space, green energy hmm. uh, as, as an example, a case in point, uh, again, nobody wants to buy just one asset. Hmm. What they're looking at is they're looking at buying, uh, of creating a platform, very often using good management teams, leveraging on them and going out and buying multiple assets. Right. So those are the two themes. Yes. In terms of sectors, uh, we see green energy. Uh, you know, the hydrogen policy has led to a lot of interest. Yes. Uh, we see in the EV space, both uh, EV infrastructure as well as with all of the incentives for so climate change and uh, sectors yes. of the future that have come up. That, that's so right. So they, they are for private equity, Vivek. Uh, which are the sectors of choice for this year? So obviously you have infrastructure and real estate as an asset class that mm. did very well last year yes. and is expected to continue to do well, especially right. when you think that the interest rate curve is going to invert now. Right. There's going to be gains from yield compression. Yes. In pure play PE, we had a reduction. Yes. Let me tell you what we think is on a soft spot first. Yes. So technology, IT, ITS, e-commerce, yes. consumer internet, that's been on a soft patch for the last year and a half. We and will that's, continue? We think that's going to continue. Yes, yes. Simply because the cost of capital has gone up. Yes. And unless you have businesses which are generating profits, yes. right, and you have a clear line of sight to, yes. to seeing value creation, yeah. the likelihood of uh, deals happening in that space Yes. is continues to be the same as it was in the previous year. All right. So startup space, uh, that is going to struggle. Uh, the struggle will continue. But, um, you know, uh, pharma healthcare has been one big pick and that is likely to also continue. Rahul, your top picks for investments for this year. Uh, spell out your strategy. Last time you gave us a very good idea. Space tech is something that you have been investing in. Yeah, uh, we have been investing in AI, space tech, the circular economy, uh, the EV transition for the last five, seven years now. Um, I think going forward, I think the thing which is uh, uh, most sort of uh, underpenetrated, under sort of focused on is the fact that, um, you know, uh, there is more and more evidence coming out that we use so many chemicals as human beings that we have no understanding of. Hmm. Um, there are only 200 chemicals that we use, which we understand the impact on the human being and the impact on the environment. Only 800 that we understand the impact on human beings and not even on the environment, but we use 64,000 chemicals worldwide. And I think that increasingly uh, science, research, data is coming out, which suggests that a lot of them during their life cycle is causing serious sustainability issues and health hazards to human beings and to other species. And I think that that whole transition into um, a chemical sector and a chemical usage, which would be um, actually good for the environment and good for human beings, I think that's a very massive opportunity, mm -hmm. not focused upon, uh, but I, I do think that that's going to be something which is very, very large. Uh, I also think that one of the big, um, challenges that a lot of companies have, and it's a really strange thing. If you re see most political debate in our country, they talk about, you know, they're not being jobs. Hmm. And you go to most boardrooms in the country and you talk to them, what's your biggest problem? They tell you that they're not getting talent. Yes. And I think that there is a uh, very crying need to reform not only the form of the education system, but the yes. execution uh, with which the money is spent across the country um, because we need people who are employable. Yes. I think another constraint that I see across businesses around the country, um, which again needs some degree of addressing at some level, is the fact that um, you know when you want to integrate into the global supply chains, and which is uh, something that the right from the prime minister downwards, right. the country is focused on, we have to create urban infrastructure and urban quality of life, which is you know. Um, which would attract international 
talent to come here and stay here. Right. And I think that urban reform and lifestyle, I think that's something which still has a long way to go. Right, right. It's uh, important sure that, that these uh, constraints. Yes, that an investor is pointing it out, the education and the quality of life. And that's very, very critical because you assess that also while making an investment, uh, you know, analysis for a company or for a geography as well. Uh, thanks for that, Rahul. But my uh, final question, Akshay, uh, to the burning issue and which affects all of us uh, here, uh, is the SEBI's uh, consultation paper on market uh, rumors and the verification by the company. What is your legal sense on this, if in its current state, really comes into play? So I think it's, uh, personally, I'm against this amendment. Um, I think that it's fraught with risk. I believe that um, it can be very easily manipulated and it might actually be counterproductive in its implementation. Right. So I personally am not in favor of it. Uh, imagine a situation where, um, you know, information very often does leak. You know, we, 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 live in a, we live in an environment where there is going to be a leakage of information. And very, you know, as m &A practitioners, we do deals all the time. And when we're doing these deals, uh, there's absolutely no certainty that a deal will go through. Uh, and if at that stage you're supposed to either, you're supposed to comment on market, specu on, on market rumors, on market speculation, you, there's, a, there's a very strong chance that what you will actually do is create a false security in the markets because you would need to necessarily uh, admit that there is a transaction that's potentially going through. Right. Uh, the chances of that transaction actually uh, materializing may be very, very small. And, you know, the price can run up. It could lead to, uh, it can actually lead to investors uh, getting burnt. Right. All right. So, uh, point well made. We'll have to see for this year if this particular amendment really comes into play. It will change the way the listed companies do deals and the confidentiality is at risk, as the legal eagle suggests in our show. All right. Uh, with that, it's end of uh, this edition of uh, Big Deal. Thank you so much, Akshay, Vivek. Rahul for giving your insights on what the next year or this year is going to look like when it comes to the deal street. So happy deal making for 2024. Thank you, Thank you so much and thanks to all our viewers for tuning in.